Hi there and welcome back to the Dev All. I am Roman and this is the third and final episode of this mini series about domain modeling with maybes and options. In the last two episodes I have introduced to you a couple of problems with null and how to solve them with options and I have showed you that options or maybes are not the best thing for modeling your domain and business behavior. In order to solve those problems we used some types and in this final episode I want to show you one example how we can actually use this all together in a front-end application architecture. So if you like this stuff, give me a subscribe, give me a like and feel free to put any comments down there. So if you have any questions, just ask me. If you want to support this channel in any other way, you can go to my Kofi channel and you can buy me a coffee or two. I would be very happy about this. So without further ado, los geht's. All right, as I just said, let's have an exercise or an example about how to make illegal states unrepresentable. So think of that we are actually building a course website for our scuba diving courses. So in this example, we are going to build a possibility for the user to actually choose and register for courses. So we have this type here that actually represents our application state. So in here we have a couple of, of fields. So it's a record called available courses and in here we have a property called loading which is a boolean. So it's either loading, loading, sorry, true or false. And then we have the list, a list of courses. So the course is a specific another type and this is the return from the server then. So it's the list of courses. Then we have a property called error occurred, which is also a boolean. And we have the error message, which is an option of a string. So if we have an error, we have some error message. And if we don't have an error, we don't have an error message. Um, so we have a none. So the question is now, how can we actually work with this? So let's have a look at here. So we have this view function and the, this function should actually render all the available courses to the user. So we have a logic in here that says, okay, if the courses, so if this type here, um, if this is loading, if our application is loading, then we show a loading spinner. So we call a function that is called view loading spinner. Else if, if the error has occurred, if an error has occurred, then we show the error page with the error message. And if we are not loading and we, are, we don't have an error, but we don't have courses, then we will show that there are zero courses available. So we call the isEmpty function of the list module and we give it the, the courses, so the list of courses to it. So we check if it's empty or not. And if this is not the case, then we say, okay, we are not loading, we don't have an error, the list is not empty, so we have courses available, then we actually show the courses that are available for the user. So what I would like you to do now is think of what kind of illegal states could happen with this kind of application state, with this type of our application state. So I just wait here, let you think a bit, and we will see if we find any problematic states together. So go. All right, did you find anything? Okay, let's go through a couple of examples. So the first one, of course, could be um, this example. So we say that the loading is true, so that we are still loading the available courses, but we already have some courses. How can this actually be? Why, why can we have a list of courses when we are actually loading the courses. This doesn't make any sense in my opinion. So we would in this case show the loading spinner although we could show the, the, the course list in this case. 
and this is not really nice. Another possibility would be this one. So we say that we didn't have an error. So the error occurred boolean is false, but we have an error message. So maybe it's an error message from a previous error that we haven't cleaned up. Or we didn't really set the, the correct boolean, but we have the error message. So how can this state actually be in our application? I mean, with this type, it's not a problem that this can actually happen. So what, we, what would we need to do in here? We would actually need to write unit tests or we need to clean this here later on because it's just an MVP and we're putting this out and, and, and we swear that this technical depth, we put it on our wall and we know that we will have time to clean all this stuff, stuff up later on. And we're pretty sure about this. But then comes the next feature and we all know that we're never going to do this. So better make sure not to have this stuff in here. Now let's talk about another point. So we have this one here. We have the loading is false, but we have an empty course list. So what does this mean? It could mean that we haven't really started with the loading yet, but we, we have already a list of courses. So how would our application look like then? So it's not loading in here. So we don't have this loading spinner and we have a list of courses. And then we have this, the uh, zero courses available. But then later on, our request might start later. And this will lead us to an UI anti-pattern that I personally hate. I loathe this. So. So we have this thing here again. So we say it's loading false, but we don't have a list of courses. So imagine you have this website here and it says zero courses available because when we go back to the spinner again, it's not showing the spinner. So it says there are zero courses available. So if we have this and then maybe there is a link down here, request for some contacts so that you can ask for, for courses when they are opened or something. And then in the split second, when you want to click a link in here or do something in there, this loading was set to true and this whole thing changes and we get this result. So it was, you want to click somewhere and then in the split second later, the whole UI changes, everything changes and the, the website looks totally different. So in my opinion, I, I have this a lot when I'm using Twitter. I think they do it intentionally to actually um, lure you to, to click some of the other stuff in there. But you see this a lot. And I really think that this is a bad, bad pattern for your user interfaces. So how can we actually solve this? Well, let's use again this type and let's just refactor it to actually use it with some types. So how can we do this? Well, we could create a new type, the, the available courses type. So it's not a record anymore. It's not a product type anymore in which we have all the possibilities, the combined possibilities in there. We make some type out of it. And this some types looks like this. So we have four different states. The first one is that we haven't asked for our courses. So this was the one in the anti-pattern, right? And the second one is that we are currently loading the courses. The third one is that we had some courses back and we get a course list in here. And we also have an error of this string thing. So how would the view function that is actually rendering this state look like then? Well, we could use pattern matching again here. And then we say, okay, we match our courses. And when we are on the not ask or when we are at the not ask state, we actually show the view not ask page. If we're loading, we show the loading spinner or the view loading page. If we have courses, then we show the courses. And if we have an actual error, we could view the error. And because the error message is only there if we are actually in the error state, then everything is fine because we can't have like an error occurred, which is false, and we have an error message or the other way around. We have the, we, we say that we have an error, but we don't have an actual error message, which could also lead to any kind of runtime exceptions in there if we expect the error to be there. This is really nice, but I think we are not done yet because what we also need to do 
is we need to model our arrows. What do I mean with this? Well, we have this type in here and we say, well, the arrow is some kind of string. But what, what kind of string could be in there? Either that we have a 404, so an HTTP arrow or something like, so internal server arrow or something. But it could also be something like that the courses are full so that we have a problem in there. So this isn't the nicest thing to, to have. And again, we have an implicit error and we need to parse strings or do something about this later on. So how can we actually fix this? Well, we could put not a string in here, but a custom error type in there. So if we use this custom error type, we could split this up into something like, okay, we have a server error which is kind of a string. So we get the message in there. So something really happened in our infrastructure or we have some kind of domain error in there. And the main error could be something like that we have the login was required or that there are no free courses available or that courses are not published yet. And talking about this, I see that this might not be the best way to model this. We could also say, okay, we have the domain error, which is just not for, no free courses available or courses are not published yet. And the login required could be something in the server part. But this modeling thing is completely up to you and you are free to choose how you can actually do this. And the really nice thing, in my opinion, is that this is really cheap to build. So it's not a lot of stuff to type. And it's very explicit. So now we have explicit error cases in here. It's, it's, it's not implicit anymore. And we actually see what can go wrong within our domain or maybe even in our infrastructure. And this is really nice. So this was the, the last slide of the, of the second video. So we have problems with options. And the question is, are they solvable with some types? So the first one was, an option bears no meaning. So there's no information why the value is not there. And as we have seen also in the second video is that we can fix this problem by using some types and explain explicitly why something is not there. So we have explicit cases for this. And what we have just seen that domain errors are not made explicit with none and options and some, etc., And also with results. So again, with some types, I think I have shown you in this and in the last video that this is done pretty easily and in a pretty nice way. And the last thing, and this is what the, this whole video was about, is that multiple options and pools in combination might have hidden semantics. And with some types, discriminated unions, it's very, very easy to make this implicit semantics again explicit. So this is really nice. So in my opinion, if you are doing domain modeling for your business application, so if you have business cases, and we're not talking too much about infrastructure here, but about your business stuff, I would always say model as if there is no option. So as if you don't have this type available. Within your code, they, there will always be some options occurring if you're parsing stuff and doing stuff. This is fine, and there are ways with map and bind to cope with this, to get rid of those again. Maybe we can have another video later on about this topic, but always model as if there is no option. And one of the, the core things to think about, if you're doing this also in other languages, try always to make illegal states unrepresentable. Always try to, to make the compiler actually help you doing this. Do not need to rely you do not need to rely on unit tests all the time of course you need unit tests or integration tests or any kind of testing to make sure your logic works but if you can make the compiler help you and not to create all these problems you're better off in the first place and the last one is that i'd always prefer to make errors in your domain explicit so if this is not a panic, if you're not out of RAM, if you're not, if you can't reach the, the other API or the other service, there is something that, that you're expecting. Don't work with exceptions. Don't work with strings. Make your domain errors or your error cases in your domain explicit with some types. All right, to wrap and to sum all this up, this whole video is so serious. I want to give you something on your way. 
to actually work with this stuff. So in my opinion, if you get your data model right, you will always have better solutions. This is what I'm convinced, totally convinced of. Um, and that's why I think you should always describe your data and you should always describe your states that can happen in your system before you are actually using it. So always start with your types if this is possible and be as explicit as possible when you are describing your domain and your errors. This is very, very important. And always start with types if is it possible. And I think this should be cheap. So I know that in a lot of languages like C Sharp and, and Java and all this, it might be a bit cumbersome to start with the types because then you need new files and new classes and a lot of stuff, a lot of ceremony to put in there and get hash code and equals and all this stuff. So normally I think this should be cheap to actually start with types. So I would recommend you to, to choose a language that allows this kind of data modeling. And what do I mean with this? I mean, choose a language that supports some types in any kind of way. This will tremendously help you. So if you choose a language that supports some types in the end, you will profit. So with this said, I really want to say thank you for sticking with me for the whole video series. Follow me on Twitter if you like, buy me a coffee if you like, subscribe my stuff if you like. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you got something out of it. So if you have any questions, please contact me. Please put any comments down there. I'll try my best to, to answer them the best as I can. So see you around in the near future and bye bye.